I'm back looking at these strange characters in the Bible. And you could call this one a Bible creature feature. You know how back in the old days they would have a one of those scary movies come out like Jaws and they would say this is a creature feature. Well, the Bible's got all that too. And this is a strange character and a strange creature. It's both. So this is in Job chapter 40 and it's a character named Behemoth. And it doesn't say his name until verse 15. But I wanted to start out with verse 1 just to give you the context of where God's going with this. So in Job 40 and verse 1, it says, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, So this is the Lord talking. Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. So God's like, Shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? Saying, Can you instruct me? The answer is no, we can't give God instruction. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We can't instruct God. Uh, Job, as great as a man as he was, he was in no position to instruct God. You're in no position to instruct God. You can't reprove God. You don't know nowhere near as much as God. And that's what God's going to try to get across to Job in this chapter. And Job, it doesn't take long for Job to find that out. Look what he says in verse 3. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. And that should be your attitude towards yourself. You are vile. What shall I answer thee? Job doesn't have anything that he can say back. He knows he's vile. He says, I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. It means he's just going to be quiet. That's what a lot of people need to do. Lay their hand upon their mouth. When you get around God, you realize just how bad you actually are. Just like Paul in Romans 7, 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Just like Luke in Luke 5, 8. He said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. That should be your attitude. That's my attitude is I'm vile. I don't know why I deserve the good things that happen. And when I pray for something that I want to happen that's going to benefit me in some way, uh, I say I know I don't deserve it because I'm vile. I'm wretch. He says, once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice but I will proceed no further. He's not even going to keep going. The Lord's already shut him up. Then entered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind. And we done did a lot of talk about the whirlwind. You see it connected with the second coming in the scriptures. A lot of interesting stuff on that. If you want to go look at that lesson. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said gird up thy loins now like a man I will demand of thee and declare un thou unto me wilt thou also disannul my judgment you know like disannul abolish make void do away with it can, are you going to do it can you do away, do away with the judgment on you Job wilt thou condemn me can you you got something bad to say about me for what's happening to you that thou mayest be righteous you see, Job can't say he shouldn't be in the condition that he's in right now. But now look what the Lord says in verse 9. Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? No, Job does not have an arm like God. Job did not put the stars into the sky. He does not keep the sun where it's at. He does not keep the earth where it's at. He says, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? No. Job's voice gets hoarse. Job's voice gets tired. So the Lord says in verse 10, Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. You know, if you're more right than God, 
Go ahead, deck yourself with these things. He says, cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. You know, try this if you're God. Abase all the proud people. He says in verse 12, look on everyone that is proud and bring him low. Notice he said, proud. If you're so good, Job, if you're as good as I am, take all these proud ones out here, bring them low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Job can't do that. Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. And then look what God says here. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. God says, if you can do all that, then I will confess that you're just as good as I am and that you can save yourself. But Job can do none of that. He can't save himself. He needs God. And that's the point that God's trying to make is, you're not, you're not that good, Job. Me and you aren't that good. We need God. We need the help of God. And without it, we're going nowhere. Behemoth is coming up now. Verse 15. Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. Now, depending on where you go, you're going to get a lot of different ideas about who behemoth might be. I've seen it where he's called a hippopotamus, an elephant, a crocodile, or whatever else, some other type of animal. Now, I do believe, historically, it's an animal. But at the same time, doctrinally, prophetically, I believe it's somebody else. So I want to give you the historical application first, and let's go through and look at who is this behemoth historically. And throw in some practical stuff on the way through. You know, the Bible's got three applications. Historical, practical, which is also called inspirational or devotional. But then also the doctrinal slash prophetical. So let's look at that. It says, Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. So behemoth, I believe he is a literal beast, a literal some type of animal that no man could take on. The greatest man, the greatest warrior in the scriptures even would fail against behemoth in his own strength. It has to be God taking him on. And God's going to use behemoth to show Job just how small, little, weak, and frail that he is. You know, you, God's going to use something that Job can see to illustrate to him just how weak he actually is. So but behemoth is a picture of something that Job can't see. Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse so behemoth was the first thing it says he was made with thee you see God is the one who made behemoth he would be able to take him on he's the creator me and you can't take him on he would eat us up so much in the stuff in this life would eat us up we can't take it on. We need God. He was made with thee. What's the next thing it says? He eateth grass as an ox. So you know what? The fact that he eats grass as an ox, it shows that he has a weakness. You know why? He has to eat. Just like uh, the la one of the last strange characters we talk about, Og talking about his bedstead of iron, and we saw his, his bed was like 13 feet in length, and we were like, 
wow, that's intimidating. Actually, that shows a weakness. Og has to go to sleep. The Lord doesn't have to go to sleep. Uh, behemoth eats grass like an ox. That shows you he's got a weakness. He has to eat. So, he eateth grass as an ox. So, you know, they talk about how... Uh, I've heard somebody say it was a crocodile or alligator, just like they say uh, Leviathan is. But, I mean, he eats grass as an ox. So it can't be that. It's got to be a much larger, more intimidating creature than that. Then he says, Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. So this animal, its, it, it's strength comes from his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His sinews, like the, the muscle tissue. He moveth his tail like a cedar. Now, that can't be an elephant. That can't be a hippo if he moves his tail like a cedar. They don't have very big tails. But that's a really big tail. I mean, you take a, a tail like a cedar, if that thing was to just spin around and smack Job with it, he's going to go flying. He's no match for it. He's no match for a tail like that. And this is how you know, like I said, it can't be a hippo or an elephant. It has to be a much bigger animal. Now look at verse 18. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like the bars of iron. So this is a really strong, intimidating animal. If this thing was to run at Job, it would just probably break him in pieces on contact. I mean, you think you're so tough. If you think you're tough, you know, just swing a ball bat and let it hit you in the ankle. And those aluminum ball bats, that hurts. And um, I don't know if you've done that before. You swung the ball bat and it hit you right in the ankle. It's painful. Take your fist, hit something that's iron with it. Hit something brass with it. You'll see how fragile that you are. It's going to break your hand. You're no match for brass. You're no match for iron. You're even not even no match for an aluminum bat. But this animal, his bones are strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. It, it would tear you up. It says in verse 19, He is chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword approach unto him. So he's the chief of the ways of God. He's the big time animal of land animals. This is obviously a land animal. So behemoth, he's the big daddy of the land animals. But look what it says. He that made him. Who made him? The Lord. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. And the Lord has a sword. And the Lord's sword can take him on. You can't take him on. You need the Lord. You need the sword of the Lord to take him on. It says, Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. It says, He lieth, he lieth under the shady trees and the covert of the reed and fins. So this behemoth, that's something else about him. The sun bothers him a little bit. So he gets under those shady trees and the covert of the reed and fins. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook can pass him about. You know, that shows another weakness. He's bothered by that heat from the sun, that sunlight. But you think about the Lord. He made the sun. And he keeps the sun burning. And the Bible says he uphold all things by the word of his power. God is the one keeping it all together. But this animal's bothered by the sun. God could put his hand on the sun and not be burned. So that shows God's superiority over behemoth. 
at the same time, you've seen behemoth superiority over you. God is showing Job that he couldn't even take on behemoth, and behemoth is light years away from ever, ever being able to take on God. Verse 23, Behold, he drinketh up a river, and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. So he trusteth that he can do it. He's very confident. He's a very confident animal. If Job was to try to scare him, you know, sometimes you can scream at a wild animal and it'll make it run away. Not with this one. He trusteth that he can drop Jordan to his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes. His nose pierceth through snares, it says. So you can't trap. Job couldn't trap this animal. His nose pierceth through snares. So the, the moral of the story is, if Job can't come close to taking on behemoth, he can't come close to taking on God. That, so historically, I believe it was... This was some type of animal that was around when Job was around. Some people say it was a dinosaur. I'm not sure what kind of animal it was. It's just some really big animal. But at the same time, this strange creature, this strange character here, it, it isn't just an animal. It pictures something in the spirit world. Now let's go back to verse 15 and I'll show you what he's a picture of. Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. Behemoth is a picture of the devil or the Antichrist. And I'm going to show you how. He says, Behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee. So he was made. Ezekiel 28:15. Shows you that the devil has not always been here. The Lord had to create him. Ezekiel twenty-eight fifteen, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. He was made. You see, he eateth grass as an ox. Well, that's similar. Similar. You know, you go to Daniel 4.33, you got Nebuchadnezzar, one of the greatest types of the Antichrist. He eats grass. God's punishing him, and he ends up eating grass. You think about your flesh. You know what the Bible says about your flesh? It says in 1 Peter 1.24, all flesh is as grass. And what does the devil do all day? 1 Peter 5, 8 describes how, he's a roar, how he is a roaring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So if your flesh and all flesh is as grass and the devil wants to devour you, the devil eats grass as an ox. He wants you for food. Your flesh, the devil eats Grass as an ox. All flesh is as grass. <clears throat> you know, I told you all common sayings come from the Bible. You ever heard the saying, your blank is grass? That's where that saying comes from. So he eats grass as an ox. Okay, as an ox. That's significant. What did God tell the serpent in Genesis 3.14? He told him, you're cursed above all cattle like an ox you know Eze um, Ezekiel describes in Ezekiel 28 14 he says talking about the devil thou art the anointed cherub that covereth so you know a lot of people say that the devil was a fallen angel you get technical about it he was a cherub you know how it describes a cherub in Ezekiel 1 and verse 10 it describes them with four faces, and one of their four faces is the face of an ox. So the devil 
connected with the ox. One of his four faces, at least at one time as the anointed cherub, was the face of an ox. He was cursed above all cattle. You know, when they draw pictures of the devil now, maybe for a movie or for a rock CD or for and witchcraft stuff, he's got hooves, many times has the face that looks like an ox and horns and everything else. That's where that stuff comes from. So you got behemoth, and behemoth, the word m means like, like a plural, beasts, animals. And I believe it pictures the devil, and I believe, break it down even further, it pictures the devil as the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 2, the Antichrist is described as not just a beast, but beasts. Look at it, it says in Revelation 13, 2, And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. So three beasts there, a bear, a lion, and a leopard. Behemoth. Beasts, animals. The Antichrist. Described by three animals. So it's a plural thing. It says, Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. His force. Daniel 11, 38 describes the devil as the god of forces. You know, like they say in the movies, that may the force be with you. All common sayings come from the Bible. You go on to verse 17. He moveth his tail like a cedar. You think about, does the devil have a tail? He actually does. Revelation 12 in verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So his tail drew the third part of the stars. So the devil does have a tail. Them stars were the angels. Revelation 120, you know, talks about how the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So when Many times the Bible talks about stars. It's talking about angels. Back there in the book of Judges, it says the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. So if stars can be angels, his tail drew the third part of the stars. He, he got or gets eventually as well more of the angels to come down with him. So he moveth his tail like a cedar. And you can look up verses showing you a, a cedar connected with something that God's going to knock down. Psalm 29, 5. Look at Psalm 29 and verse 5. It says, The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. The tale of behemoth is no match for God Almighty. When God takes on behemoth, he can just grab him by the tail, spin him around like one of those wrestlers do on TV. Just spin him around and throw him. The de you but to see, the devil's pictured with a tail and imagine a serpent before he lost his legs. Genesis 3.14, before the serpent, the animal, lost his legs, imagine what he would have looked like. It would have looked like he had a little tail back there. And this tail is like a cedar. Look at Psalm 104.16. Psalm 104. Look at verse 16. And 16. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted. God's the one that made the trees. God's the one that put the trees there. You think he'd have a hard time taking on behemoth? He could pick a cedar tree right up out of the ground and throw it. And then you got Amos 2 9 that talks about uh, one of those wicked kings, and his height was like a cedar. It's funny, them cedars many times connected with certain things.
Job 40 and verse 18 says, His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. Now, you think about that, but then you think about the Lord. What does it say about the Lord? His feet are like fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Revelation 115. The Lord is going to stomp behemoth with those feet. He's going to slice him with this sword that comes out of his mouth. So the Lord can take him on, but me and you can't take him on. We can't take on the devil. His bones are like strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. Behemoth pictures the devil. We can't take him on. But the Lord can. You need the Lord. You know, we, we can't take on anything yet, really. But one of these days, our vile body is going to be fashioned like unto the Lord's glorious body. And we don't know what we're going to look like. But we know we're going to be like him. We'll see him as he is. You know, this corruptible is going to put on incorruption. This mortal put on immortality. But until then, you're really, really going to have to rely on the Lord because your flesh is as grass. You're not going to be able to make it on your own. You can't do it in your own strength. You don't have any strength. And that's what he's trying to get across to Job. Job's literally taken on the devil. And the devil is much more stronger than the behemoth animal. But that iron, it's always associated with something negative. Just like in Daniel 2.33, it talks about the iron mixed with the miry clay, miry clay associated with the Antichrist and his kingdom. Remember back there in Deuteronomy 3.11, it's associated with Og king of Bashan and his bedstead of iron. You know, he's one of those wicked giant kings and he's got a bedstead of iron. And Deuteronomy 4.20, it calls Egypt the iron furnace. Isaiah 45.2, referring to iron, it says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut and sunder the bars of iron. The Lord can cut right through the devil. The Lord can cut right through behemoth's bones. And you know who's going to destroy the Antichrist kingdom? The stone cut without hands. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's no match for the Lord. Psalm 107, 15 through 16. In Psalm 107, 15 through 16, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron and sunder. You see that? He cut right through it. He's got a sharp two-edged sword that comes out of his mouth. Revelation 19, 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he shall smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Okay, behemoth's got bones of iron, bones like iron. Wouldn't it be cool if the Lord slew behemoth, took one of his bones as the rod he rules with? That'd be pretty cool. But man believes... He's so strong when he has iron. And he won't rely on God as much. Maybe that's one reason why, why the iron is pictured as so negative in the Bible. Because like when man gets an iron chariot back there, he starts having confidence in himself. And back there in Deuteronomy 27, 5, it said, and there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord, thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. He didn't even want them lifting up an iron tool when they made the altar. Uh, he, just, he wanted them to rely on him. It's like the more strong things you get, 
the less you begin to rely on the Lord. You know, I imagine back before there were cars, people had to walk everywhere and things like that. They probably relied on the Lord more. We probably relied way too much on vehicles and airplanes and all these things we got. We put so much trust in them. But behemoth. His bones are like strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. And brass pictures judgment. The Lord will use the devil to judge you. But he's no match for the Lord. The Lord's feet are like fine brass. Verse 19. It says, He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Now this is a key. It says he's the chief of the ways of God. What's that remind you of? Well, the devil is the big dog of the spirit world. Ephesians 2, 2, what's it call him? <coughs> the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 6, 12, what are we wrestling against? We're, we're wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So princes, principalities, powers, rulers. You see, the spirit world has a hierarchy to it. There's a angel that's a king over the bottomless pit. The devil in the spirit world, he's the top dog. He's the chief of the ways of God. But the Lord's way above him. We got the king of kings. The devil may be the God of this world, but we got the God who made the world. We got the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the devil's no match for him. Look what it says. He is chief of the ways of God. He that made him, who made him? Well, back there, verse 15, the Lord said, Behold now behemoth, which I made with thee. The Lord made him, so he that made him can make his sword. To approach unto him. And the Lord has a sword. Revelation 19.15. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Hebrews 4.12. We've got the sword. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Lord cut right through. Will cut right through the bars of iron. And the strong pieces of brass. It's no match for him. The Lord can make his sword approach unto him. You know, you're having a lot of problems with the devil. You're having a lot of problems in your life. The giants in your life. But those things are no match for the Lord. And you're no match for those things without the Lord. That's what you need to get. You need the sword. Psalm 149, verse 6, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. You need the sword. Look at Isaiah 27, 1. You want me to show you who wins in the end? I'll just go ahead and show you who wins in the end in case you don't already know. Isaiah 27, 1. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. He'll cut him right up. There's no match for him. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. All right. Verse 20. Job 40, verse 20. Surely the mountains bring him forth food. Where all the beasts of the field play. Okay, the mountains. So he likes to hang around in the mountains. How come? Well, he likes high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Remember? And what did they do in the Old Testament? They went up in the mountains. They went up in the high places 
where they would worship their false gods, where they would make their images, where they would do child sacrifice, where they would eat, drink, be merry. Look at Ezekiel 18, 5 through 6. Ezekiel 18, 5 through 6. It says, But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, now look at this, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a mistress woman. So you see, hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. They would go up there, they would completely give in to the desires of the flesh, worshiping the idols committing spiritual adultery in the high places. I mean, they would they would take their kids, their own kids, and sacrifice them, make their son and daughter to pass through the fire, up in those high places, up in those mountains. So it says in Job 40, 20, Behemoth, thinking of, you know, the Behemoth picturing the devil, surely the mountains bring him forth food. Sometimes that would have been child sacrifices. Then it says where all the beasts of the field play. The beasts. You know, you think about the word beasts in the Bible. It's just not referring to uh, an animal. It can refer to false prophets. It can refer to devils. Uh, it can refer to the Antichrist. He's called a beast. And it's the beasts of the field. Well, Matthew thirteen thirty eight, the Lord said the field is the world. And that's who we're up against. The rulers of the darkness of this world. The beasts of the field. But you know what? The Lord's got the sword. And he's coming. He's going to stomp, stomp right over them mountains. And the idols are going to be utterly abolished. I'll look at verse 21. Job 40, 21. He lieth under the shady trees and the covert of the reed and fins. So, he likes warm, wet places just like, just like you've always heard the unclean spirits like warm, wet places. They like to inhabit a body. He lieth under the shady trees and the covert of the reed and fins. <clears throat> and you know that devil possessed guy you know he was always in the mark 5 5 always in the mountains and in the tombs just like behemoth here surely the mountains bring him forth food and that uh devil possessed man the devils were cast out of him what do they want to do they want to go into the pigs they're like the warm wet places these he's uh Behemoth lies under the shady trees and the covert of the reed and fins. They like shady areas. When they would offer their idols and stuff in those high places, it would be in shady areas. Hosea 4.13, they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. You see... The shadow thereof is good, therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. They like hiding under that shadow, because uh, men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. John 3, 19. So it's a covert. He uses it as a covert. Job 38, 41. Job 38 and verse 41 who provideth for the raven his food? When his young ones, all right, Job thirty-eight forty, when they couch in their dens and abide in the covert to lie in wait. You see, he hangs out under that covert to lie in wait. He was a roaring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's hiding behind that tree, couched down, to pounce on you when he gets the chance. 
It says the sh in uh, Job 40.22, The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook can pass him about. You know what? Just like Behemoth, the animal, would have hid under those shady places to get away from that heat of that sun and that sunlight. The behemoth animal hates or isn't particularly fond of all that S-U-N sunlight. Well, the devil isn't fond of the S-O-N sun. He doesn't want anything to do with the sun. He wants to be the sun himself. You see, the God who made the S-U-N sun, hung it up there, keeps it burning. Uh, he's going to slay Behemoth. He's going to slay the devil. He's, the devil's no match for him. And he hates the S-O-N sun just as much as a beh the Behemoth animal tries to hide under the shady trees from the sun, the S-U-N sun. So you see the similarities are just endless. It goes on and on. Job twenty or Job forty twenty three, behold he drinketh up a river and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. He trusteth he can do it. He thinks he can do anything. He thinks that he can take on God. He's prideful. So you're not gonna you're not gonna get him to back down. You know, you can't come at the devil and act all tough and stuff. He trusteth he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. He thinks he can take the water of life into his mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's no match for him. We're no match for the devil. If God allowed it, the devil could destroy my life today. But he's no match for the Lord. We've got to completely rely on the Lord. Completely come to him. Say, I am vile. Please take care of me. Please don't let these people just destroy me and, and just kill me. You know, I need you, Lord. That's what you need to be saying. You can't do it in your own strength. I mean, he's, he's really strong, and he thinks he's even stronger than he actually is. He's got a lot of confidence. He's prideful. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. You know, what was his sin? He was lifted up in his beauty. In his wisdom, that was his first sin. It wasn't when he tempted Eve in the garden. He was already fell with, with pride before that. And it's, it says, He drinketh up a river and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can drop Jordan to his mouth. And, you know, he's probably still mad about the, the first two floods that God brought on him back there in between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2. God flooded out Lucifer's kingdom. And then in Genesis 6, 7, 8, 9, you see the Lord bring the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Those angels mixed with the women made devil's little kingdom on earth there with the sons of God, with the daughters of men, and making those mighty men which were of old men of renown. But the Lord flooded those people out. The devil's probably still upset about that. So what does he do? You get over into Revelation 12, 15 through 17. And it says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. So you see, he's going to counterfeit that flood. He thinketh he can draw up Jordan into his mouth, just like in Job 40, 23. He cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The similarities just go on and on. Job 40, 23. Job 40, 24. He taketh it with his eyes. His nose pierceth through snares. He takes it with his eyes, just like the strange woman tries to take things with her eyes. Proverbs 30, 13. Proverbs 6, 25. His nose pierceth through snares. You can't trap him. I can't trap him, but the Lord Jesus Christ is going to trap him. Proverbs 30, 33. It says, Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, 
and the ringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. His nose pierceth through snares until the Lord gets a hold of that nose. And then the ringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. Proverbs 6, 25. Or no, Revelation 20 and verse 1. Revelation 20 and verse 1. This is where his nose isn't going to pierce through this snare. It says in Revelation 20 and verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. He can't pierce through that. He has to be loosed by the Lord. So behemoth, you can't take him on. I can't take him on. We can't take on the animal that was behemoth. We definitely can't take on who behemoth pictures, the devil. But there's a man who can, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need his sword. We need him. We need the living word. We need the written word. Don't ever think you can do anything on your own power. The only reason that you can get up out of bed and walk is because he's letting you. You can't take on anybody without him. Think about the questions he asked Job. Hast thou an arm like God? No, you don't. You don't have an arm that can take on bones like brass and iron. It says, Canst thou thunder with a voice like him? No, you get hoarse. Your voice cracks. You can't thunder with a voice like him. So rely on the Lord. Put your trust and confidence in the Lord. And you'll be a lot better off.